and I'm live. All right, so basics seven practice. Uh, let's do this completely out of order. How about act one, as some kids say? How many prime numbers are there between zero and 20? So a prime number is divisible by itself and one only. Well, I cannot spell itself. It's elf. By itself and one only is also not zero because zero is not divisible by zero. All right. All right, so between 0 and 20, we just start listing them off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Some kids like to do this in their head, and they're usually the ones that miss this. I'm not saying you're that kid. I'm just saying the kids that usually miss it usually just try and do it all in their head. That should have the word inclusive. All right, 20. All right, so 1 is part of the definition. 2 is divisible by itself and 1 only. Oh, yeah. 3, 5, 7. Uh, I skipped over 4 because 4 is divisible by 2. I'm skipping over 6 because 6 is divisible by 3. I'm skipping over 8 because 8 is divisible by 2. I'm skipping over 9 because 9 is divisible by 3. 10 is divisible by 5. 11. 13. 17. 19. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight primes. All right. ACT2, three robots are completing a task. Robot 1 can complete the task in five hours. Robot 2 can complete it in four. Robot 3 and 3. If they work together, how long will it take them to complete the task? So Robot 1 can do a fifth of the job in an hour. We're going to add to that robot 2 who can do a fourth of the job in an hour. We're going to add to that robot 3 who can do a third of a job in an hour. And together, the sums of their work, the sums of their labor, is the complete job 1. So looking at this one, the LCD, the least common denominator, is 60. I'm going to multiply everything by 60 because it will make my fractions disappear. 60 over 5 is 12. 60 over 4 is 15. 60 over 3 is 20, and 60 times 1 is 60. Adding these together, there's 37 X's. So X is 60 37ths of an hour. Just a little over an hour. Quite a bit over an hour, actually. It's like an hour and maybe close to 40 minutes. But 60 37ths of an hour. All right, what's up next? ACT bonus, which is worth 2. If i is negative, the root of negative 1, what is the value of such and such? And I keep writing this down, but these actually come by working with this. If I square both sides, I'd get i squared. And if I square the root of a negative 1, I'd get negative 1. i cubed is i times i squared, which is i times a negative 1, which is negative i. That's where it came from. I to the fourth is an I squared times an I squared, which is a negative one times a negative one, which is one. So those are the ones I have to know. I through I to the fourth. So here's I to the fifth. I to the fifth is I to the fourth I plus I cubed, which is known to be negative I, plus I squared, which is known to be negative one. Three I squared i squared is known to be negative 1. 7i to the 4th, i to the 4th is known to be 1. Moving on in my life, I know i to the 4th is 1. So I'm just going to replace that with a 1. So I have i minus i. They're gone. This is negative 3. That's 7. Put them together. You get a 4. Negative 1 quarter. All right. Bonuses. Bonus 1, bonus 2. Solve for x. Cover up technique. 3x is 0. Divide by 3. x is 0. Cover up. 2x minus a 7th is 0. Add a 7th. Divide by 2 and division happens in the denominator. And 7 times 2 is 14. So 1 14th. There's my two answers. 
solve by factoring. 14x squared plus 29x minus 15 is nothing. It's been about two weeks since I made this problem up, so I have forgotten how I was supposed to factor it, but my gut says 7x and 2x. 15, my gut says 3 and 5. Fudge. Nope, still there. 3 and 5. The outside makes 35, the inside makes 6. So if I add 35 and take away 6, I'm there. There's the factoring. All right, use that cover-up property. 7x minus 3 is nothing, or 2x plus 5 is nothing. Add 3, I get a 7x equals 3. Divide by 7, 3 sevenths. Subtract 5, divide by 2. So 3 sevenths and negative 5 halves. And I'm done with bonuses. I'm actually going to stop this video, make sure that it actually gets kept, because sometimes a stinking thing crashes.